Okay, welcome back. This is chapter 13, the lucky chapter. So the, the previous chapter, we learned an awful lot about event processing. We talked about how you can use the traditional technique where you use the on-click thing inside the designer. And then we talked about a, another technique where you can use an interface. So now we're going to do a third one. Now we're going to use anonymous classes as a way to do event handling. Okay, so before we get started, we need to talk, have a philosophical discussion about where and when you want to do this type of event handling. I mean, because there's some choices. Now, I give them names, although technically the, I kind of made these names up. Um, so one way is what, what I call the immediate method, which means every single time you click on a control, you click on a checkbox, it fires the event handler every single time. Every time you click on a inside an edit text, it fires an event handler. You know, th so it's an immediate thing. As soon as you click on something, something happens immediately. And sometimes you have no choice. You, as soon as you click on a, a particularly if like uh, I have a a, a spinner uh, and a, like a drop down box, and I have a drop down box that changes something in my form. Well, I have no choice but to process the event right then and there. And then there's a deferred model which basically means, look, I don't have to worry about processing the events until I'm done. Like, this is how forms are typically done. You know, I fill out a form. So I fill out this field and this one and this one and this one and this one. And then there's a giant submit button at the bottom. And I hit submit. Then and only then does it go look to see, well, what did I type in the text box? And what did I type in this radio button? And what did I type in this, you know, check box? So sometimes you want to immediately process the events and sometimes it's like, nah, you know, we'll do it some other time. We'll wait until you hit a submit button or something. And so it's kind of up to you to decide when that's appropriate. Sometimes you have no choice, like this one I described where you click on something and it immediately alters the form. Well, pff, then I have no choice but to have it, uh, have the immediate thing. Okay. So we needed a strong background in object oriented programming. Uh, because we introduced in last chapter this concept of an inner class and an anonymous class. Now, the, the, the terms are not really complicated. Inner means I just have a class and it's another class. And anonymous means I just don't ever assign it a name. I mean, just don't ever assign it to a field variable and therefore, therefore it's anonymous. These, these are not mystical, wonderful terms. They're just common ways of describing things. Okay. <clears throat> so... On page 306, they start talking about declaring and initializing objects. It's like, uh, we've been doing this for quite some time, about inflating a control. Remember all that? Okay, so I'm going to build me a text view. By the way, this is a standard setup where I build a thing with an empty, and then I go in and I swap out the, uh, the activity main to a linear, right? Same old, same old. So I'm just going to grab me a text view, and I'm going to drop him over here. And I'm not going to necessarily put anything in him. And so remember how we inflate the control? There's two parts to this thing. Typically, I want to have it at higher scope, not necessarily always, but I want to do here and say text view, uh, TV, whatever this thing is going to be. Let's call it title. And then down inside my on create is where I inflate that guy. This should not be <clears throat> something new because we've been doing this a while. And Yes, you can do it this way with a, a cast operator, although it's not required. You could do it without the cast. And I'm going to say find view by ID, r.id, and then I never actually gave that guy a name. I probably should go back and fix that, huh? So I'm going to go here to the attribute guy, and, and I'm going to call him TV title. I just like the ones in the designer to match exactly the ones here. Let's say this. So this would be TV title. Cool. Okay. And as you'd expect, uh, the machine's never heard of a text view before, so I have to do another extra import. So now I've inflated the control again. whoop de doo We've been doing this for quite some time. But now I can go in and do some things. So now, now that I have access to that thing, I can talk to it. I can say TV title dot set text, for example. I could say Hello! You know, that kind of stuff, right? And, and one of the things that's kind of weird, they, they do an example in, in the book 
is um, <clears throat> they can set the the visibility, um, which is kind of weird. So I'm going to do one that says set visibility. So there it is down there in set visibility, and it takes a, an integer as a thing. But there's some, there is some uh, some interesting um, uh, enumeration in there. So I'm going to call view dot, and this is one of the things that you can do here. Uh, I'm going to use one called gone. Okay. So now if I run this guy. then, okay, there it is, but it's not visible, is it? Okay, just to make sure that I wasn't cheating, I'm going to comment that guy out. We're going to run him a second time. So now I can talk to the guy, and I can change his visibility. I can do all sorts of strange things, right? Cool. This is stuff we've been doing before. No big deal. All right. <clears throat> One of the things that I like to do is be able to enable or disable a control. So not necessarily a text view, but if this was an edit text, well then yeah, like uh, I don't want you typing in this particular field for some reason. Like in this one scenario, this field is not relevant. So I to so to make sure you don't actually go there, I'm going to disable it so you cannot put your cursor there and you cannot type anything. Okay, so let's do that here. I mean this is a text view, but come on, give me a break. So it'd be like TV title, and then. There'd be a thing called uh, set enabled. Set enabled. And then you tell it whether or not you want it to be enabled or not, right? So a cool way of doing set enabled, I could just say um, <clears throat> true, like that, would make it enabled, or false would make it not enabled, right? Okay. So um, that's a cool little trick, and you're going to need to know how to do that when it comes time for your term project. Okay, just say. Okay, so on page 307, they start talking about creating widgets from pure Java without going to the designer at all. Now, I can kind of sort of see a scenario where you might have something that's so complex that you don't know in advance whether or not you need a checkbox there or not. Now. Their technique is, well, we'll just do it in Java. My technique would be to build the thing and make it invisible. Like I would make set it to disable and I would put it like under something, change its visibility so it's not there. Can't see it and you can't click on it. And then if you needed it, then you would go back and say, I want to set the visibility back to full and then enable it again. That would be a little bit more sophisticated technique than what they have in the book. So I'm kind of going to discount that. You can read that. It makes a little bit of sense. I mean, they create, for example, in the book, they create a button. They, um, they add the button to the layout. Uh, then they use the, you know, the normal, you know, set content view thing. I mean, you would have to go in and manually, particularly, if, well, now, if you were using the constraint view, you'd have an awful lot of work to do. But if you're using a linear view, if you drop a button on the surface, I know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be as wide as the screen is, and it's going to go all the way up to the top. So, you know, if that's what you wanted, great. So you'd have to set the title, and you'd have to set all the, you know, whatever the event handler was, and that kind of thing. So that's um, mildly amusing on page 307, but I'm, I'm ready to move on. On page 308, they start talking about ex exploring the palette, the widget palette. So the widgets are these really cool things. We've seen it in the designer before. Uh, you know, sometimes I say the word widget. Uh, widget is kind of an older term in the um, in the Java world. Um, but really, we're talking controls. So these are the common controls. So yeah, so here they make a distinction between what's a real widget and what's a normal control. Eh, I don't make that distinction, really. But just saying, okay? All right, now, let's get back. So one of the things you might want to do is you want to prompt somebody to enter their name or, or their age or something. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to the text guy. And so here's just a plain text. Plain text just means uh, nothing special about it. It's just you could type in letters and numbers and punctuation marks and whatever the heck you want. And that would be perfect if I'm asking somebody for their name. 
So I'm going to grab this guy and drop him on here. And uh, I guess I will change his his um, his his name because that's pretty dumb. So this one, oh, uh, I did not mean to do a text view. I'm going to undo that. Dog gun it. I was trying to get the plain text. I don't know how in the world I clicked on that. So anyway, I'm going to drop the sky on the thing, surface one more time. Now, the top one is a text view. All the rest of these guys are actually what's called an edit text. Every single one of them. So why is there so many of them? Well, it's an easy way to set uh, the, the filter. Um, so if I told it this was a date or a time, that means it'll only accept things that look like date and time. If I told it it was a number, it'll only accept things that are numbers. So it's filtering what you can type. If I just clicked on that, well, I'll do one. So first of all, let me rename this guy. I, I, ET for edit text. And this is going to be like name. Okay, cool. And then let's do another one underneath here for a number. Now I have a choice. I can do regular number, a sign number, which means takes ne negative numbers, or a decimal number. So I just want the plain old number number. I'm going to drop him in here. And we're going to make this one ET age. So I'm asking you for your name and your age, for example. Okay. Now I want to run this to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So in the name column, I can type Mary had a little lamb. One, two, three, four, right? No big deal. But I switch down to here and I start typing A, B, C, what the heck? It'll only take numbers. One, two, three. Isn't that pretty cool? Isn't that kind of the heart of what we've been doing with input validation? Except now we just created a, a scenario where it's practically impossible for me to type a bad number. Okay? Now, not it's not impossible. For example, is that a good age? Uh, probably not. Well, well, wait a minute. It, talking about age of a human, not age of a you know, a building in Europe. So yeah, if that was age of a human being, then I still have something to do, right? I still have some some input validation, but I don't have to worry about, is it gonna convert to an integer? That's pretty much well given now because of, I'm filtering out how this thing works. Now let's go look behind the scenes to see how it did that. Okay, so, oh, I did not mean to close my emulator, doggone, wow. Okay, so in here, there should be something in here that, that talks about the, the input type. And let's look at all the input types there are. There's a date. There's one that looks like a hyperlink. There's one for a short message and one where I have auto-correcting text. And then there's one for the number and, you know, text visible, you know, for password, like you want to show it. You know, web and multi-line and the filter, da, 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 date time, da, 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 all these things. There's a lot of these guys. And you can have more than one. Um, you could have one, for example, when it comes to the, uh, the, the uh, let's, l let me give you an example of how you might want to have two of them. So for edit text for the name, I probably don't want to do any spell checking, okay? Well, maybe I do. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this input type and I'm going to tell it that one of the things that I, I particularly, it turned on this and this and this and this. So I'm going to turn on no suggestions. Okay, that means if I type a word that it doesn't know, the spell check isn't going to go in there and try to fix it. Now, I wouldn't do that everywhere, but if you have some funky names, like for example, it doesn't know how to spell my first name. So if I type my first name in there, it's going to say, wait a minute, did you mean? And I'm going to go, no, I know how to spell my name. Thank you very much. Leave me alone. Okay, so uh, we're coming up on the 15 minute mark, so you guys know how this works.